Healthy Chemicals, in fact, has been quite an outperformer within the Indian uh, pharmaceutical listed stock space. It's given good returns of around 70-odd percent from its 52-week low, trading at around, uh, say, 30 times, 35 times one year forward. And that's quite expensive as compared to its peers. So what is growth looking like? What is FI24 looking like? Are there any challenges to their domestic growth, which has been growing at a scorching pace? We have Nikhil Chopra joining us in the studio. Uh, Mr. Chopra, hi. Welcome to the show. Well, you know, that is the question. You all have outperformed uh, the Indian pharma market. You've grown at 30%. The Indian pharma market has grown at around 15-odd uh, percent. Your chronic portfolio, which is drugs which are used on a regular basis, has grown around 20-odd percent. Are there any headwinds to this growth in FI24? So, first of all, Ikta <laughs> and Sonia and Manglam, thank you for inviting me on the show. Good to be in the studio. Overall, if you look at the way pharma market overall has behaved post-COVID, mm -hmm. and if you as a company have identified where you want to win and play, then there is huge scope. And we as a company, what we identified in early part when we, when, when we came in and when KKR acquired JB as a company, we looked at what we can do particularly in chronic part of the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look at overall the burden of disease in the country is so high. And just to give you some examples, 100 million people suffer from hypertension in the country and one in, one in four patients is undiagnosed. Oh. The burden of disease of lung disease is 100 million patients. Metabolic, lifestyle diseases. So overall, the way we look at and we can do this in a couple of therapies, what we are trying to do in the world of heart failure, in the world of hypertension, is to look at how do you reduce the burden of disease? Mm. How do you get into facilitating early diagnosis? How do you want patient to live a better quality of life? So that is what we are trying to do, and that is helping us, and we can't do that in 10 therapeutic areas, but what therapeutic areas we have identified, and that is helping us in terms of outscoring the market. There have been also opportunities in terms of what we have done in terms of better life cycle management, what we believe in incremental innovation for some of the portfolio that we have got in Indian market. That is what has helped us in terms of outscoring the overall market. But so, is it going to continue? So there is scope <laughs> in terms of, yes, or if you look at what we are trying to do today, uh, what we acquired, uh, one of the asset called Senzyme, yeah. where, we, where one of the big brand was Sporolac. When we acquired one and a half year ago, the brand was 65 crores. Today, in a couple of years, the brand today is close to 90 crores. Mm. But still, our market share is from 7.5% 7. 7. of our market share today is 10%. We have 90% competition. So let us look at it from that perspective in terms of what is the opportunity. Uh, last acquisition that we did was Rosua Shetin, the brand Razor that we acquired from Glenmark. Mm. We are the 10th rank brand. Right. And, 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 and market share is close to 5-6%. So huge opportunity being a dominant player in cardiology. We can, do, we can do much more with what we have got in terms of the acquisition. And equally, what we have got in terms of the organic portfolio where we have done enough life cycle management, we'll continue to outscore market. Performance outscore the overall market. I look at India pharma market growing at around 8 to 12 percent, depending upon seasonal variability, and we should be better than the market as compared to 3 to 400 bips. That right. is what at this moment of time I can give. So we see a lot of optimism and potential as far as India is concerned. I remember a couple of years ago, India was just about 40 percent of your yeah. business. Now that has gone almost up to 50 percent. Where does that settle? I mean, how as a company, are you looking at India as an opportunity, as a proportion of your overall revenue? Very good question, Mangalam, and this is what I would I wanted to speak in terms of where we where we are looking at India as a market. 70 to 80 percent of our time, effort, money, energy will go for India. Okay. Today, India is contributing around 52 to 53 percent of our revenue. We want to take this contribution to 60 percent. Okay. And within India, today, con chronic uh, chronic business uh, contribution is close to around 53 percent which again we want to take it to 60 percent. Mm. So India is going to be our big bet. We have got uh, close to 2,000 plus uh, people uh, who every day go and meet doctors. We meet around uh, 400,000 doctors uh, across the country, across specialty. Mm. And our per person productivity, which, uh, which, we, which we started when we, we were in 2020, was close to 3.7 lakh rupees. Uh, last year, our per person productivity is close to 6.2 lakh rupees. And we would like to inch up mm. close to 7, 7.5 lakh rupees. So that will overall help us in terms of better margins and it will help us to reinvest in the business. That is that is what we want to do. Okay, well, uh, it's great for you and congratulations on growing your business in a big way, but very unfortunate to see how cardiac health in India yeah. especially has deteriorated significantly, right? Uh, but, you know, I wanted some numbers. You've grown the business uh, over the last many years. I think your turnover or your revenues were about 1,700 crores yes. in FY20. Now you're sitting at almost 3,400 crores. Yes. What do you think you can do by the end of the FI 24, 25? When do you hit that 5,000 crore milestone, 6,000 crores? Any internal guidance that you're looking at? So we have kept some milestones, but let us not get into numbers. But let me right. talk about the way we look at business. Today, we may be 
23rd ranked company in terms of value in India, Indian pharma market, which is close to now uh, $25 billion market and we have 1% market share. We are 33rd ranked company. Today we are 23rd ranked company. But from a prescription perspective, the prescriptions which are generated when a patient is going to a doctor right. every, every, every day, mm. we are 15th ranked company. Mm. So there we want to inch up. We want mm. to be in top 10. We want to be 12th ranked company. That is the near time horizon that we have kept. Con contribution coming from India should go up. Also, what I wanted to talk about is what we are trying to do outside India in yeah. terms of what is helping us in terms of generating the revenue and the big bet that we have taken is in the world of CDMO mm. where we have the capacity, we have the capability, we have good partners, Procter & Gamble, Rackett, Johnson & Johnson, Which is basically Tedco, for manufacturing Los, Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles is what we do, which is close to $50 million business. We want to take wow. it to $100 million yeah. with all the big partners. Our capacity to manufacture Los Angeles is close to 2 billion units a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last year we manufactured close to 1 billion plus. So that can double. So, so that can double. So we have that capacity, we have the capability, we are developed. Today our Los Angeles predominantly are in the world of cough and cold. Yeah. We manufacture VIX, VIX Hecta, VIX Immune, Stepsils, Deflam, Deflam Plus, all these products we manufacture for big players. And mm -hmm. apparently in different flavors as well. We right? have 14 <laughs> different flavors. And one of the better proof of concept that we have kept for ourselves for Los Angeles is if today we make a lozenges, hmm. and after three months, if a patient is consuming in some part of Southeast Asia, the lozenges should be as fresh as made. That is what hmm. we believe in. Okay, well, that's on lozenges. We've discussed that. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you about your margins, because while you are looking at 3,000 crores plus in terms of sustainable revenues going forward, your margins have been under pressure. Yeah, yeah. So tell us, what can you sustain at? Uh, we, we are looking at margins of around 20 to 22 odd percent which is adjusted for your ESOPs, yeah. you're looking at 24 to 25%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us, what are you looking at in terms of improvement of margin? So last two years, if you look at the guidance that we've been giving on margins, I'm, I will talk of all, always the operating habitat, that is, hmm. uh, in, which includes the ESOP cost. Hmm. Uh, we reported 765 crore as our habitat, which was 24.3% exactly. We have upped our margin margin guidance, if you look, if what in, in terms of for next two years. We have been guiding for 24 to 26%. In next two years, mm -hmm. starting this year, you should look at our margin guidance close to 25 to 27 percent. That mm -hmm. should help. And that is, that will be because of overall the contribution of India going up, yes. mm -hmm. CDMO going up, within okay. India the chronic business contribution going up, productivity going up without adding the manpower, yes. okay. efficiency that we want to drive in the company. So, so these are all aspects. 25 to 27 percent. Very quick question on Asmada, which is a cardiac yeah, brand. Yeah. How much do you think you can grow it by? And you know, what's the overall size of the business? So overall market is close to, if you look at, mm. is close to around today 50 crore, 600 crore. That is that is where we stand. Mm. Uh, there are now, there were there were three four players uh, who had who had who were working closely with Novartis. Now there are there are 50 more companies who had come with the patent going off. Mm. Overall, before getting into the size of market or what we can grow, once again I will like to talk about the burden of disease. 15 to 20 million people suffer from heart failure in the country. Mm and only 10 to 15% are getting the treatment. And the diagnosis is only done by 2D and 3D echo, which takes time. Mm. So a lot of initiatives that we are putting, we are running close to uh, 500 plus heart failure clinics in the country, mm. where patients can come with the entire uh, entire performa which we have, sure. where there are indicators where patients can get to know, are they, poten are they potential to suffer from heart failure? That is, where, that is what we are trying to do. Uh, our peak revenue for Asmada was close to around 12, 13 crores, September 2022. Sure. We have reduced the price by 45%. Mm. The revenues have come down half, but the volumes have jumped. Okay. So, Mr. Chopra, we are running out of time. Just a one word question, one word answer. answer yeah. Are you making a fifth acquisition? <laughs> not that I will, I will, I, let me talk about the way we look at acquisition. Mm. It is not yes or no, I can say. There is no are one word answer. Are you something now? So, there are opportunities in the market okay. in terms of the way we scan and we continue right. to look at opportunities. As and when it comes, we have some of our criteria in terms of how much synergy we can build in if we acquire something. Can we grow that asset at double the pace as compared to where it stands or can mm -hmm. we improve the EBITDA margin? Right. Those all aspects have been put into place. It is not that we want to chase mad valuation, but we want to look at what synergistically fits in our entire kitty. Uh, the way we want to run the portfolio. All right. Thank you so much for joining in, coming into our studio and answering a whole host of questions from us, uh, talking about the entire opportunity for JB Chemicals. Thank you. Thank you. Take thank a short you. break now.